Hello, welcome to Joy Fido International. So today we're going to be coming up again with something really exciting, something to make you think and start organizing yourself around life. My name is Joy Fido and welcome on board. So you know what we represent from Joy Fido International? It's all about inspiring you to success. And that's what I'm here to support you with. So, like I've always told in our various videos, we're coming up with a lot of things on that side of our business, inspiring you. And the Joy Fido International is going to grow really massively again in the realm of supporting you. So you can see where I'm sitting now. I've set up this nice couch so that I can be talking to you a lot more with all the ideas that I've been dreaming about and thinking about and things that have helped me to cope with life. Now, interestingly, something really devastating happened this week. Someone I know very well just passed on and that really, as usual, shook me from my roots. And then my question becomes, how do I support people? How do I help people with the experiences I've had that I could actually feel good about what I've done about life? Because as you know, none of us know what tomorrow is bringing. So the more we can share a piece of us with the rest of the world, the better. And that's why today I'm coming out with something really exciting. And the topic is about self-imprisonment self-imprisonment in what do we do to ourselves in life that stop us from really achieving those things that we really want to achieve so it's all about freeing ourselves from self-imprisonment so when you hear self-imprisonment your question will now become what are those things that make us actually imprison ourselves now, I love to use that word self-imprisonment because, you know, on a general level, if you do something wrong in society, you get into trouble and then what happens? They get you and they lock you up. Now, in that case, you didn't imprison yourself. Society imprisoned you, locked you up, away from the world. But what then happens in reality of life? Everything that we are comes from our mind. And so within your mind, you can create an amazing life or you can equally create a very narrow life for yourself. A narrow life in the sense of you will tell yourself, this is what I don't like. This is the way I want things to be. This is, this is, this is. So it's coming from you. And the more you close yourself in, the more you're actually imprisoning yourself. So that's why I need to chat with you about what I know as self-imprisonment. So that if you find yourself doing this to yourself, you're going to help yourself open that door and come out of it. And one of the first ones I want us to look at is the strength of life comes from everything that we experience. And when I mean everything that we experience, it could be good things, it could be bad things. What happens when good or bad things happen to you in life, which is a necessity of life? It's how you handle it. And this is why they always say it's not a matter of if bad things are going to happen to you. It's a matter of how you react to whatever that thing is and there's nobody out there who's been great or successful that has had a smooth run in life life has what they call the ups and the downs the strengths and the weaknesses so it's your ability to overcome no matter how hard it is that makes you a stronger person in So, how are you able to handle whatever the situation is? Now, 
you're going to find that whatever it is we're dealing with in life, there are times you feel hot and there are times you feel great. And as a human being, when things go wrong, we feel hot. When things go right, we feel excited. Now, from time to time, we do feel physical pain. And so what is a physical pain? If someone actually hits you with something, you feel a pain in your body. And that's physical because you could actually see something being hit on your body. Then there's emotional pain. Emotional pain comes when someone hurts your feeling. And so whatever this situation may have been, you feel, this is a very serious, serious part now, you feel, you feel hurt. And then there's the mental pain. Where, when does that happen? You've been feeling down about something and then you carry on continuously thinking about it, thinking about it. Eventually your brain gets carried away with this thing on your thoughts. And so constantly thinking about it creates a mental pain. And then there's a spiritual pain. Spiritual pain happens when you completely distract yourself from who you are. And so there's a disconnection. And you're no longer there. And there are times when people do things and I say, this person is no longer there. They don't even know what they're doing when they do these things. So all types of pains exist. But as a community or as a society in life, what we tend to do is we only notice the physical pain. And so you hear someone getting hot and maybe you see blood flowing. Oh, look, this person got a cut. And so blood is flowing and oh, wow, there's a pain. They must feel so much pain because from that cut you can see something going on. But when someone feels emotional pain, you don't see it. And in my course, which I happen to be doing a nutrition course, what then happens is your cells start to break down because the way you're thinking then affects your cells. Remember, we're made up of tiny, tiny cells. So once the cells start to break, you gradually start to deteriorate. And that's why they normally say stressful situations will lead to death. It is extremely true. I mean, even in my hair business, I know what stress leads to. People lose hair. I had a client or a student once who, after she lost her son, within two weeks, she lost all her hair. That came from emotional pain. And so all of these pains are real. And it's for you to be able to handle them. How are you able to handle your emotional pain, the one that nobody sees? How are you able to handle your mental pain, the one again that no one is seeing? How are you able to handle your spiritual pain? No one is seeing it. So this is where your mind comes in to play a major part. And you hear people falling into depression, you hear people turning schizophrenic, you hear people turning into what we time as they've gone mad or mental. All of these are things that nobody sees. The outsider doesn't see it. And so here I am today trying to chat with you about understanding the various stages that you could find yourself into. And you need to be strong enough to pull yourself out of it. This is where you are the one now locking yourself up in this prison. Because all these pains I'm talking about, people around you are not seeing it. They don't know what you're going through. The only time people see is because it's physical. But once it goes away from that physical, it then comes down to you. You are the only one who can actually 
sit with yourself and snap out of it. Sit with yourself to pull yourself out of this prison. It becomes a prison because it is only you who can self-talk yourself. Self-talk is real. Because there are voices in our heads that's telling us this is wrong. This person really did do this thing and it really hurts my feeling and I feel so bad about it. Remember the word feel, feel, feel. If you're able to come out of it and say, yes, this happened, but it's not going to stop my life. So, I am chatting about this today because I have been through various types of emotional pain, mental pain, spiritual pain. And like I always do, I tend to share my experiences with you. And if I can overcome something, then a voice says to me, go and share it. Because if you share it, there may be people out there that will benefit from it. Hence, I say to you, I'm here to inspire you to success. Because, like I say most of the time, when we are out there in the community dealing with the rest of the world, you find people focus more on the one thing or the other thing. Most of what people focus on is so much about wealth. Um, I'll teach you this so you can make so much money and I'll teach you that so you can make so much money and you're going to own the world and you're going to build houses and you're going to become a millionaire and a billionaire and a trillionaire or whatever it is. They, and people tend to forget that none of this will happen if deep in you, you don't even exist. I've experienced it. You may have all the ideas in the world that could change the world. But if you suddenly drop down somewhere where you get lost, those ideas come to nothing. And so in my parts of struggling with things, I always try to get a meaning out of it. Whenever I experience something that's hurting my feelings or affecting me, I always ask myself, how would anybody else benefit from this? And so recently, I had a major emotional pain. I've talked about it. My marriage was falling apart and I felt I'm losing control of who I am. And then a voice came to me to say, you know what? This thing you're feeling, somebody else out there may be feeling the same. And I would have lost out in the sense of, I would have locked myself in and said to myself, that's it, done. Then I realized I still got so much to share with the world. And just like I said, with this friend of ours that just passed on, you suddenly realize, what was the purpose of life? Was that it? It's not so much about making all these millions and owning all the houses in the world and traveling the world and driving in the best cars and wearing the best clothes and looking the most fashionable and the most glamorous it comes down to what else can you contribute to the world it comes down to who else can you inspire to be better and so for me it's not so much as accumulating all this hot i'm feeling more and more locked in i'm feeling more and more insane inside it's about expressing yourself and the minute you can bring these things out of your mind the quicker it is for you to flow again the quicker it is for you to carry on with your life the quicker it is for you to realize that life is not so much about all these other things that i've just talked about So my advice is about unlocking yourself out of that place where you've locked yourself into. That prison that you put yourself into because you're sitting down there feeling sorry for yourself. I'm feeling unempowered. Feeling like you've lost control of who you are. And suddenly you now feel the world owes you. 
No, the world doesn't owe you. You owe the world. You owe the world in the sense that you have so much to share with the world. And like the last video I, I talked about, it is not so much about just your feeling. Once you get a good grip of who you are, you're going to find that there's so much about you than just selfishness. Okay, so here we are talking about feelings and feeling hurt and pain and all of that. And the next big thing I want to really bring out to you, which I experienced again, is um, giving and taking. Giving and taking is a major part of who we are. And um, when I start, when I was working on presenting this particular video, my thoughts were it should be about what we call give us and take us. And why did I think of that? Then I realized that we get to this point in our relationships with people where we feel we've given so much. Given and taken, we've given so much. And I took my time to understand my relationships with people. I have an aunt that, that gives me a really special name. And, and when I look at the meaning of that name, it's you are a giver. That's what she calls me like. I give. And I know that about myself. I love giving. An example is continuously coming here to chat with you about my experiences in life, which is all about sharing. So I love to share whatever I have in the form of whatever I feel will support anybody else. Financially, emotionally, physically, I will share it. That's just my nature. And uh, one time we were looking at this, this thing, um, it's about plants and I've forgotten what the name is called and I read about myself and apparently I am like an oak tree you know that tree oak or a K and apparently my role is I'm like an umbrella tree where I put everyone underneath this tree and I protect everyone around me and I support and I I kind of give and and grow and nurture and that is very true about my personality and so for me in my relationships I expect people to maybe give back a little as well so I give all of me and I expect sometimes people should give me a little bit but what I tend to find is I just give 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 and very rarely do I get people give back most of the time I don't feel it. I don't I don't even notice that this is happening. And then sometimes it hits me in the face that hold on a minute, I've been given so much to this person. What am I getting back? How about when I need something from this person? And then I start to feel hurt. I start to feel bad. So this is what's going on. So out there there are givers and there are takers there are those people in your relationship that all they want to do is take from you and whenever you there say how about you give me something back in return then they suddenly realize that oh my goodness oh she found out that I don't give her anything now this is my advice to givers like me and this was really funny because my little daughter she's equally that kind of person and and she was complaining to me that the mom we went on this trip and um, everything I bought for this trip, I was happily sharing with my friends. Um, I actually had them in mind when I was buying this thing. So she's saying that um, she actually had her friends in mind when she, you know, was shopping for all of these things to go on this camping trip. And on getting there, she's happily giving her everything and one time she now suddenly asked one of her friends could i have something from you and the girl was like no i mean it's actually for me i'm i'm 74 and then she suddenly said mom i was so shocked i've given them everything i thought it was was only fair for them to give me something when i asked 
and I had to explain to her, you know, honey, that in this world there are givers and takers, and you happen to be a giver. So, this is my advice to you out there if you find you are in that position. When you are happily giving, please give with your spirit allowing you to do that. Don't give because you feel um, obligated to do. Don't give because um, society demands that you should do that. Give it because you know within yourself that you want to give this. I mean, at this moment, I am equally still struggling with my family on the same issue. People that I share things with don't feel they should share things with me. And I'm reminding myself, you know what, this is the time to understand that if I am doing something for anyone, I do it because I want to do it, not because it's an obligation. And that's the message I want to get across. You want to share, you are a giver, give, because your spirit says give. But for the takers out there, I just want you to remember that these people that give you things are equally human like you. And they are given because they love to give. Now it's only fair that if someone is always there for you, you should also learn to be there for that person. It's just a message. Learn to also give to people. It may not necessarily be you have to repay. It's not about repaying. It's about being in a position to equally share a bit of you with the world. So while we we're talking about feeling hot, um, this is what creates that pain, the feeling of pain. Because you have given so much of yourself and the other party is not responding the way you were thinking. And then suddenly you feel down, you feel hot, you feel used and you feel abused and you feel betrayed all of these feelings come from the fact that you have given so much and you felt the other person should also have reciprocated but this person didn't and it's not a good place to be i must tell you it's not a good place to be to feel those things because it's real but unfortunately we cannot tell what the other person is. I mean, there's a saying that um, there is no art, A-R-T, there's no art to find the mind's construction on the face. So the way our mind is constructed, there is nothing on this earth that can make us see that on another person's face. And these are very deep feelings because you are with people and you don't know how they feel about you. I mean, there was a case that I, I read once that really touched me. This was a husband and wife scenario and they were, they were poor, they were struggling with life and making ends meet and they carried on, they were fine. But the minute, somehow, luckily for them, then they won the lottery. And when they won the lottery, got so much money and you know what happened? Then they broke up. Now money was in the picture. What happened? Suddenly the husband knew what he wanted to do with his share of the money and then the wife knew what she wanted to do with her share of the money. But all along when they didn't have anything, they carried on. But you see where I'm coming from? It's, it's about being um, lying to each other because all along there was really nothing binding them. They were together because it was obligatory. They didn't, they didn't really feel anything for each other. They just carried on because it was necessary. Now, suddenly money comes in. They were different individuals. So suddenly the husband had things he wanted to do and the wife had things she wanted to do. So at what point could they have been able to read each other's minds? No such thing. So. This is what reality is. You have something in your mind towards someone, but you don't know what that person has in their mind towards you. And there's another saying about, you may call people your friends, 
but do they call you their friend? Because when it really comes down to it, do they stand by you? Do they support you? Would they do things that will help you? These are the questions. And then, as humans, when we find ourselves in such positions where we thought this person was ours, this person is my husband and I would do anything for him. This person is my sister and I will support her. This person is my mom, is my dad, is my, is my best friend. And suddenly a situation arises where you have this expectation and it's not met. You know what happens? Then you feel so hot. And that's where the emotional hurt comes in, emotional pain comes in. So that's reality on life. We cannot find it. The mind's um, uh, uh, um, description on the face. We cannot do that. It's all hidden away from us. And so it's down to you to do what you want to do for the other person out of the, you know, your own spirit. Let it be something that deep inside you, you feel about it. Such that if this person disappoints you, you don't feel hurt. It's very important. Because we're talking about being locked up in a prison, a prison that we created. And so most of the time we end up opening this prison yard and locking ourselves up because someone else out there has hurt us, has done something that we feel so bad about. But remember something, it is you that feel this bad. It is you who is feeling. The other party is not feeling. Because they already had their agenda. They knew what they were going to do. The scenario has created itself and this has happened. So you are the one who's hurting and it, it feels like a double hurt. Because now you, you're hurting and you've opened the door and you've locked yourself in. But the other person, because they knew their agenda from day one, they're not feeling anything and they haven't locked themselves away. So do you see where this is all coming together? So if you are there for people, be there because you want to be there, not because you're obligated to be there, not because it is necessary to be there. And so pull yourself out of that prison. Stop locking yourself away because your life is extremely important. You are great. And so you need to stand up and be there for yourself and don't live in regrets because lots of us then live in regrets and feel bad and then mentally hurt and, and you know emotionally hurt and spiritually hurt pull out of all of that and be there for you and be who your creator wanted you to be okay so I've given this scenario of givers and takers. Now, as a giver, you don't lose out at all. This is a big one for you. You never lose out at all. The good thing about givers is the door is always opening for you. Whenever you give, this person doesn't give you back, doesn't mean anything. Your creator gives you back. The door opens for you all the time. And so if you're a naturally nice person, you may not get back from the people you're expecting, but trust me, out there in the universe, nature supports you. So that's one thing you really must take from this. Don't go home or, or think within yourself and say, you know what, I always give and I don't get back from these people, so that's it. No, nature gives you back in every form. So remember to continuously be yourself. You may be smart about what you do. You may be, you know, um, looking in words and encouraging yourself spiritually but remember at no point in time does a giver lose so I want you to stay strong with yourself and one of the biggest messages from today is happiness is the key to life happiness is the key to life and I know I've talked about it a few times and maybe the message will slowly come to you. 
but you know there was a time they had this program and it was talking about the secret and all the things that you know you attract what you give out there and all of that is true but the biggest thing you need to take on board is realizing that your state of mind is so important to who you are if you create a peaceful happy state of mind you end up attracting great things into your life and these are some of the things i'm discovering the older i'm getting in life you have to create an open mind you have to create a peaceful mind you have to create a happy state of mind once your state of mind is happy great things will come to you and that's why i'm saying to you do not lock yourself in this prison because the minute you find yourself locked up away, you're ha unhappy, you're hot, you're angry, you're, you're feeling really bad constantly, all you end up attracting are unhealthy things into your life. But the minute you create that sanctuary, peacefulness, happiness, and I won't stop talking about happiness, because whatever it is you find that gives you excitement and happiness and makes you feel good about yourself do those things if you find yourself slowly drifting away because things have upset you things have hurt you things have made you feel bad look for those things that bring you peace and those things that give you happiness those things that make your heart sink because the minute your heart sings good things come your way so free yourself from your own prison unlock that door create happiness find peace find love in this life thank you so much for watching our video today and i look forward to seeing you in the next one follow us on instagram joy fido water braiding for our hair services and you know training and all of that uh facebook we have the same thing joy fido international is absolutely coming out with a lot more there'll be interviews there'll be you know documentaries there'll be um inspirational talks like i've just done now and so i look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you again and god bless you